Okay, welcome to a very interesting tutorial indeed. Um, we're going to be looking at um, creating a fake depth of field, which is basically what we're looking at now. Um, I will warn you, uh, in the recording I don't think the mouse cursor is going to show up, so in post I'm going to just, you know, show little arrows and stuff I guess. You know, like now. So that explains it all. Um, this we're going to be using in Photoshop CS5 and Adobe After Effects CS5. Um, this does have a potential to also be used um, in video, not just pictures. The only thing with that is it will be frame by frame rotoscoping around objects frame by frame. So I wouldn't recommend using it in video at all. This is mainly just for pictures, but for those of you who have the patience to sit there frame by frame um, you know good luck to you it might might not look as good but you know so yeah in this image uh, you can obviously see the the depth of field in the background and the objects in front which is in focus this is a real uh, image this isn't being faked but this is what we're going to create you can achieve this with several ways with a camera you can have the camera very close by to an object with a lot of foreground at the back you know focused in or you can have a a Canon 5D for example with a, a really good aperture which would give you these kind of results if not and you just want to create something from a simple image you know from a consumer digital camera for example then this is the way to do it so here we are in After Effects and now we want to import our picture so open it up and import it and we want to drag it into a new comp and you want to control D on the image to duplicate and we also want to make a camera so go to new camera and you want to set the preset to 35 millimeter and set the aperture to about 300 and click OK and OK okay so now we have our picture and we want to start creating our fake depth of field now I'll say there's two ways you can probably do this you could probably do this in Photoshop uh, you know cut around our uh, person feather the edges blur the background but I like doing it in After Effects because I like to overcomplicate things yeah anyway so we'll turn off the eye for our last layer we'll start on this layer we'll get the pen tool and we'll start cutting around now the good thing about this you don't have to be completely accurate uh, can be quite rough around the edges because we're going to be feathering it and it won't matter too much as you'll see I'll just cut around get it roughly what you want okay that'll do okay so now what you want to do is um, turn these into 3D layers so if you click the two boxes here it will now make them 3D and what we want to do is move the bottom layer backwards so on the z-axis and just push it behind as you see as you push behind it blurs out because of the aperture on the virtual camera so this is basically the idea so if we turn this off for now and we can get a nice depth of field I mean, you can go really extreme if you want it's entirely up to you how you want to go about it but I recommend just about a nice little shadow kind of depth of field about there and then we want to shift click and get it stretched out get it perfectly lined up that's pretty good so now you have the image which is far back in 3D space and it's been stretched out and um, now we'll just switch our top layer back on and as you can see it's already starting to take effect now one thing you will notice is these black bars on the edges because of the fading on the picture it just kind of creates these black uh, fades on the edge so to get rid of that just click on this go on to effect stylize motion tile and then on motion tile to turn mirror edges on and then just bring this up a few and then there you go, done. Uh, what motion tile actually does, if you look, um, if you move this back, 
it's just created a a mirrored uh, version of the picture itself. So um, again, that's quite handy if you want to do anything else funky. Don't know why you would. So now we're back and we have a slight problem. Well, it's not really a problem. It's more uh, you've got very fine edges on here. So this is where the feathering comes in. So if you click on the object that you cut around, press F, bring out the feathering, and you want to just um, kind of just very slightly blur the edges, but not too much. Because if you go too much, you'll start to see it will defocus the background. So you want to kind of just do it very subtly. A good way of doing it is if you turn the eye off on the last layer, you can get a good idea of how much you're revealing. So you want to kind of just very slightly. And I think that'll be okay. Again, you can fine tune it. You can, uh, you know, come in here and, uh, you know, if it's too much, you can just sort of delete parts away, you know. But, um, Again, that that should be okay. Okay, so that's pretty much it. And then we bring this up, and as you can see, it's looking pretty good. Uh, you can hardly see the edges. Uh, there is a slight side effect, of course, um, because you're blurring the background. Part of the original image as well will be slightly blurred on the edges, so uh, you can see this slight, very very slight edge from the original arm, which is just because it's been blurred, obviously. But um, Again, that's something you can't really control. Okay, so the next stage is exporting our image um, into a Photoshop file or a JPEG, whatever. So there's two ways we can do this, obviously. We can composition save frame as file or Photoshop layers, or we can do another way, which I find is much more faster and efficient. And if you're doing these in batches, it's probably a good idea to do it this way. Um, it's by using a plugin, which I will link uh, in the description perhaps. Um, if you go to File, Export, Copy Frame the Clipboard, open up Photoshop and then you can, uh, as you can see, it, it, um, it loads it up for a clipboard and you can just Control V and there you go, you've got your image straight in from After Effects. Um, and obviously from here you can you know adjust it to accordingly, I don't know, little contrast adjustments, you know, that's pretty good and done and you can save out whatever you want so that was pretty much it um yeah i shall link you the plugin i think it's called comp to comp or something um let me check ah, okay comp to clip so yeah i shall definitely link you those and that's it for me boy no seriously bye because i'm not doing one of these it's the only time i'm doing them Bye.